Welcome back to part two. In this part, we'll cover basic variable types and operations. Variables are program elements that can hold values. In general, we can assign and reassign the values stored in variables. C is what's known as a statically typed language. We won't go into detail about what that means now, but basically every variable has both a name and a fixed type. For example, a variable can hold an integer value, that is a whole number positive or negative, a floating point value, which is a decimal number, or a single character value. As a statically typed language, C requires that variables and their types be declared before they can be used. When a variable is declared in a section of code, that section of code is known as its scope. A scope is essentially the area of code where the variable exists and thus can be used. Outside of that section of code, a variable is said to be out of scope. An int, short for integer, is one of the three basic variable types that we'll cover initially. An int is a 32-bit signed twos complement integer variable. Again, don't worry about the details of what that means yet, but know that an integer is limited in what it can represent. Specifically, it can represent whole integer values between about 2.1 billion negative and positive 2.147 billion. Here are some examples. In each declaration, we specify the variable's type, its name, and we can optionally set its value, as in the second two examples. If you do not assign a value to a variable, its contents are undefined. C does not specify a default value to be stored in variables. It could be zero, or it could be a garbage value. It all depends on your compiler and your operating system. Thus, it's best practice to assign the initial value whenever possible. A double variable is a decimal number. Specifically, it's a 64-bit IEEE 754 floating point number. But again, don't worry about the details of what that means. Just to give you the general idea, such a number is represented similar to scientific notation, where the number is normalized and we keep track of the sign, the number itself, called the mantissa, and an exponent. For now, simply understand that this representation also has limitations. Double variables are only accurate up to about 16 or 17 decimal places. As a consequence, some mathematical operations involving floating point numbers may result in a loss of precision. Another common type is float, but we won't use it in this series because it's only a 32-bit floating point number and provides far less precision. Here are some examples of double variable declarations. A char value represents a single character value. Characters correspond to the ASCII text table established in the early 60s. The basic characters, such as A through Z, both capital and lowercase, as well as numbers and other punctuation characters, all have an entry in the ASCII text table. Each character corresponds to an integer value between 0 and 127, so characters can also be thought of simply as numbers. After all, at the end of the day, everything stored in a computer boils down to some number. Here are some examples. To denote a single character, we use single quotation marks. When you create variables in your program, you must follow certain rules. Variable names may contain alphanumeric characters including lowercase, uppercase letters, numbers 0 through 9, and underscores. However, variables may not begin with a number. Also, you can't have white space in your variable names. So if your variable names have multiple words in them, they need to be combined into one somehow. In addition to these simple rules, there are several conventions and best practices that you should follow. Underscore casing is very common in C code, where variable names consist of all lowercase letters with each word separated by an underscore. Uppercase underscore casing is also common and is typically used with macro definitions as in our miles to kilometers example program. A modern convention is to use lower camel casing where the first word begins with a lowercase letter and each subsequent word begins with an uppercase letter, but otherwise all the other letters are lowercase. This is also referred to as Pascal casing and makes variable names very readable, but also avoids having to continually type underscores which can be awkward. This is the convention that we'll use and suggest that you do too. Whatever you end up choosing to use, consistency is the most important thing. In practice, when writing actual real-world code, you would want to adhere to some established style guide. In addition, variable names should be short but descriptive. The name should reflect whatever the value of the variable is representing. Good examples would include the following. Initial value, longitude, latitude, interest rate. Bad examples of variable names would include the following which are too generic to have any relation to the value stored in the variable. Implicitly in our previous examples, we've been using the assignment operator, which is a single equal sign. It simply means place the value on the right-hand side into the variable on the left-hand side. Don't confuse this with the arithmetic equal sign, which means equality. 
In code, we use something else to denote that. In general, the right-hand side of the assignment operator can be a literal, which is a hard-coded numerical or character value, or it may be another variable, in which we're essentially copying one variable's value into another, or it may be an entire arithmetic expression. The left-hand side, however, is always going to be a single variable. Let's try a few examples. First, let's declare an integer variable. We've not specified the initial value here. We can do so after we've declared it. A now has a value of 10. We could have done this initially. We can also declare multiple variables at the same time. And we can copy values from one variable to another. Or a combination of variables. There are several basic arithmetic operators. We have the addition operator, as well as subtraction, both of which are straightforward symbols. We also have multiplication and division. However, since the standard mathematical symbols are not on the standard QWERTY keyboard, we use an asterisk or star and a forward slash to denote them respectively. All these work as you would expect. Another operator that might be new to you is the integer division operator, denoted by the percent sign. It gives you the value of the remainder of division of two values. For example, five divided by two has a remainder of one. Three goes into 11 three times, and there's a remainder of two. Six goes into 12 evenly, so there's no remainder, and the resulting value of this operation is zero. Just as in mathematics, arithmetic operators in code follow the same basic order of operations or precedence rules. In general, operations are performed left to right, with multiplication and division performed before addition and subtraction. For example, the division in this expression takes precedence over the addition, and the result is 11. It is not the same as if we had placed parentheses around the addition, giving it a higher order of precedence. Likewise, in code, we can use parentheses to redefine the order in which the expression is evaluated. In fact, it's best practice to use parentheses, even if they're not necessary, to indicate intent and make code more readable. Here are a couple of examples. In the first, the parentheses change the order of operations. In the second, they don't change the expression, but they do make it more readable. We conclude by noting that sometimes funny things happen in code that don't happen when dealing with mathematics. Arithmetic with integers usually results in an integer. Likewise, arithmetic with doubles usually results in double values. But if we mix the two types of variables, they sometimes become incompatible. For example, consider the following code. It's okay to assign an integer value to an integer variable. It's also okay to assign an integer value to a double variable because 10 can easily be seen to be 10.0. But if we try to assign a double value to an integer variable, things go wrong. Integers do not have a fractional part, and so something called truncation occurs. In this instance, the fractional part is ignored, and so b gets a value of 3 instead of 3.14. Truncation occurs when the fractional part of a value is chopped off and thrown away. This is not the same thing as rounding up or down. It doesn't matter what the fractional part is, it just gets ignored. This is especially important to keep in mind when dealing with division. Consider the following example. We have integer variables with values 10 and 20 respectively. When we go to divide them, the result should be 0.5. But an integer divided by an integer results in an integer. Thus, the fractional part is truncated and lost. Even though the C variable is a double variable, the result of the division is still truncated and C gets the incorrect value, zero. To solve this problem, you need to do what is called an explicit typecast. You need to put double within parentheses in front of at least one of these variables. This tells C to upcast temporarily the value stored in B, so that the result of the division will be a double and the fractional part will be preserved. We're temporarily changing the variable type for the purposes of the arithmetic operation. However, this does not change the variable type of b. It's still an integer and will only ever be an integer. For nearly every other operation, this consideration is not necessary. Only really with integer division is it an issue.